Venus Fridays, what's going on with our divine feminine planet this week that helps us to understand what's going on with our divine feminine internally, inside and externally, outside in the world and tuning into what Venus is doing helps us to better interact with and connect to the opportunities of the divine feminine, empowering our divine feminine this week, as well as a couple of other astrological happenings this week too. So Venus is currently in the underworld phase of her cycle, right? She's traveling on the other side of the sun from our view, going through this really powerful alchemical transformational time, right? Where we have the opportunity to look into what are we wanting to transform while Venus, our divine feminine, transform within our divine feminine while she's traveling through the underworld? And if you're interested in that, Kaylin Castell and I, who teach Venus alchemy, are offering a free webinar this Friday today about Venus traveling through the underworld. So I'll put the link below and you can check it out. So let's dive into stellarium.org. As you know, if you've been following me, my favorite software, astronomy software, and see where we're at. Okay, so here I've turned the sun off. Here's the sun on. We can't see anything. We turn the sun off to see where we're at here today on Friday the 17th, right? So there's this huge conglomeration right here. So I'm going to move that down and just zoom in. And I'm going to slide it down a little bit more and zoom in more so we can see, right? We've got Venus. Uranus is there, it just disappeared because it's so close to the sun and Jupiter, right? All of these four planets are traveling here together. I'll just turn Uranus back on for a second. Just give me a second to click on that so we can see there, right? So Uranus is in the little red dots. So sun, Uranus, Venus, Jupiter, right? All of this is close together. So I always like to point out that there can be an overemphasis in our current time with our astronomy software and what we know and astrology software of like, there's an exact conjunction that happens on a certain day, which does happen. But look how close all these planets are together in the sky for a sustained period of time. So there's not a pressure to connect into the energy only on that day. It's a process that happens for us. Okay, but let's span back out, go around. I'll just leave Uranus on there so we can see. So here's our horizon line, right? I'm doing this at about noon, my time. So we can, um, we're just, the sun's about to reach the mid heaven up here, reached its highest point during the day. I'm going to turn the ground off so we can see. So here today, Friday, the moon right here in Virgo, the very last ending degrees of Virgo moving into this priestess constellation is trine Venus right here. So that's what a trine looks like. They're both in earth signs, Venus and Taurus, the moon in Virgo in trine, right? So that's 120 degrees. It's one third of the movement around the circle, the ecliptic, the yellow circle that the astrological signs lie on that the sun moves through throughout the year. So trine is a flowing aspect, we say, right? Where the energy is, um, I don't want to say beneficial, but it's like, it's, um, it's working well together, right? Both earth signs, they work well together. They're of the same element, that element that's like serving our senses, serving the physical, being grounded into the body. So the moon, whatever it touches, whatever it highlights in these geometrical patterns, these aspects, it highlights, it activates. So there's a nice like flowing activation between the moon and Virgo, the priestess const the priest not const yeah, the priestess constellation, but the the priestess sign that is about like what's sacred, tuning into the sacred, connecting to like what's happening on the earth right now with Venus in Taurus, which is 
the most embodied, grounded sign. So there's a nice flow today to be grounded, connected into the earth, connected into what you're seeing happening on the earth with the flowers and the plants and the trees and the birds and the animals and just how you feel and put your feet on the grass, right? That kind of energy. So our divine feminine is getting activated in a flowing way by another earth sign, just helping us ground, be present with our feminine expression today or with any like discomfort that comes up around being in our feminine power, right? As well, being present with ourselves. So then let's go into tomorrow, Saturday, which is a big deal. So we have, I'm going to zoom back in to this massive conglomeration in Taurus right now. Here we go of Venus is comes into the exact conjunction with Uranus. So they are aligned again. She's moving into the conjunction and then she moves out of the conjunction. So it happens over a sustained period of time, but the exact conjunction where they're at the same degrees in alignment happens tomorrow on Saturday in Taurus. So our divine feminine in Taurus in that embodied sign is meeting with Uranus, which is our planet of change and revolution and unexpected events, but also the planet that like helps us connect to that universal consciousness and awareness in the world, right? Neptune, I think of being the planet that connects us into the universal heart, universal love. Uranus connects us into universal mind and understanding, right? So our divine feminine is meeting with that energy. So there's a couple of opportunities with this, right? So one, our divine feminine, are there any changes that we are needing to make personally and collectively that help us embody and bring the feminine more in, more into our world, more into our bodies, more into our awareness, right? And ob the obvious answer is yes, right? Something that we're all like, many of us are working on and trying to re-empower and bring the feminine back into her rightful place in the world. So this conjunction is is a nice opportunity. So like pay attention to epiphanies or ahas you get around your feminine or changes that you need to make to help empower that energy within yourself more within your body, Taurus as well, right? So it may be like, oh, I love the idea of empowering the divine feminine, but in action, I don't do that. Or in my body, I'm not present with my body and I abuse it. Or like last night, I ate a bunch of sugar, which I've done like a couple of times this week. And it's usually something I try and stay away from, but it's just kind of like out of my control right now. And it messes with my sleep. It doesn't make me feel good. And I'm like, wow, okay, what is going on with that, right? Right. This Venus Uranus conjunction is like helping to bring my awareness to that, right? Where am I not comfortable in my body? Is there stress that's making me like crave and want the sugar, right? Nothing against sugar. I'm not saying everyone should not eat sugar. It's just something that doesn't work for me, right? So this conjunction is like bringing up that kind of energy and awareness and understanding for me to like take that to the next level because it's not being present. It's not being part of the yin with the feminine, with myself and my body. Just an example, you could have a totally different experience. Okay, also today, the same day on Saturday, the sun and Jupiter come into their exact conjunction in Taurus as well. So there's a lot of activation and energy. So the sun represents our vitality, our vital force, our life force energy, chi, prana, to use terms from China and India to help us understand that, is aligning with Jupiter, right? Our largest gaseous planet that is all about expansion, right? Whatever it touches, good or bad, it expands, it makes bigger. And that's that vital force, that energy on the same day that Venus, our divine feminine is meeting with Uranus, that change agent awareness planet. So 
that's a lot of energy happening on Saturday. And it'll be really interesting to see like how we feel and experience that. And interestingly, the moon is going to conjunct the south node today on Saturday as well in Libra. So some more activation around kind of where we're moving from, around relationship, um, you know, uh, the way we see ourselves and connection to others. So like all of these themes could get lit up for you and could be part of what you come into a greater understanding of or what you intentionally try to understand more about for yourself so that we can continue to make the changes that embodiment that Taurus asks of us to like be in our human body, enjoy the senses of our body, deal with the feelings, the experiences, the things happening in the body so that we can move forward and be in more empowerment in the world. Okay, so that's just Friday and Saturday. So then on Monday here, the 20th, right? Yep, Monday the 20th, just making sure I got all my dates right. The sun enters Gemini. So we're going to start having a lot of this Taurus energy moving towards Gemini, right? Starting um, on this day. So the sun enters Gemini. So that means we're a month away from the next solstice in June, right? Because Gemini is a mutable sign serving spirit sign in alchemical astrology, as well as shamanic astrology, where I first learned um, about astrology to work professionally. My first certification was through the shamanic astrology mystery school. So the sun is entering Gemini, serving spirit. We're moving from Taurus season to Gemini season, right? So all of a sudden now we're into air and things are a little more tempestuous. Think of like the wind, right? And Gemini is that sign of like, it has such a thirst for knowledge. It's so curious. It wants to have fun and it's learning. It wants to learn everything, experience everything, like move beyond the polarity. So it's a nice time over this month to like lighten up, get out of our boxes. We just had all this activation in Taurus awareness around ourselves being present. And now it's like, whoo. Let's lighten up, let go, get a little bit lighter and just have some fun and play. But in this serving spirit way where we it's serving a larger mission, right, where it's like helps us get out of the box that we keep ourselves so tightly held in. So that's on Monday, the sun moving into Gemini, and we start to move into this much lighter, more playful air, more kind of up and out where Taurus is down and in kind of energy. So let that happen and occur for you. And then on Thursday, <clears throat> there's a lot more happening, <clears throat> excuse me, on Thursday as well, the 23rd. So I'm just going to show that here. We still have Uranus, Venus, and Jupiter came into their conjunction Wednesday night, Thursday morning closely. So Jupiter expansion of that divine feminine energy, a great time to kind of like tune into, <clears throat> again, what we're seeding, what we want to have happen with our divine feminine expression, that empowerment. Mercury moves into Gemini today on Thursday as I mean, sorry, Venus is moving into Gemini as well on today on Thursday. Um, and then <clears throat> just after that conjunction with Jupiter, right? So <clears throat> expansion of the feminine, she moves into this new sign from Taurus as well, right? So our divine feminine following the sun, right? Because they're so close together because Venus is in the underworld, right? If I turn the sun on, Venus is hidden in the light of the sun. <clears throat> and so our divine feminine moving into Gemini, again, lightening up, getting out of the box, right? Expanding Jupiter, that feminine energy out of the box, those changes, that curiosity, learning kind of 
fulfilling that need of Gemini to just like learn everything, explore it all. And it's also, I'm going to span out so we can see the whole circle here of the ecliptic and the moon over here, the full moon in Sagittarius. So here is the moon in Sagittarius opposite the sun. This is happening um, earlier in the morning. So I'll just kind of spin the time back just a little bit so we can kind of see that more directly. And here we go. Well, I don't know. I might be making this like too confusing to look at, but here you see here, this is a good view right here, right? Here's the sun is rising. The moon is just setting. There's that opposition of the exact full moon. So last thing I'm going to say, and then we'll wrap it up for today is the Sagittarius full moon, moon and Sagittarius opposite the new sun in Gemini. And remember Venus is there, Jupiter, Uranus, all this energy is close by. There's that full moon time for celebration, right? So Sagittarius and Gemini live on the opposite ends of the same pole. They're on the same polarity, right? Like a battery of positive and negative. And so this is the place where that curiosity, that thirst for knowledge meets with Sagittarius thirst for experience and meaning and experience exploration and adventure. So it's a great time to like, just celebrate the moon, have fun at the full moon, right? Lighten up, enjoy yourself, maybe howl at the moon with the coyote, which is, you know, associated with Gemini as well of like, you know, celebrate like the importance of your life and what you're here contributing, especially because it's Venus Fridays and we're talking about the divine feminine and how you're helping to bring more harmony and balance back to the polarity of the masculine and feminine, like helping both heal so that they can come into better unity and connection. So, that's what I have to share for this Venus Fridays. There's a lot going on this week. I hope it's just like a great week for you and that lightening up can feel really good, right? Depending upon where Gemini sits on your chart and, and how much it's a part of like your growth and your evolutionary journey in this lifetime. This could feel like, oh my gosh, I've arrived home. Thank God it's Gemini season. Or it could feel like, whoa, Gemini is challenging and hard for me. So I hope whatever comes this month, it's just a lot of um, helpful growth and hopefully a lot of play and light and fun in your world. Thanks for watching.